Hey everybody, it's Amaka here from Driven Hard, and um, I wanted to do, um, we're gonna do two things on this video, give you a quick channel update, what's coming up, um, where I've been in terms of lack of videos and whatnot, and um, the bill from Land Rover. <laughs> One of two, God. Um, you know what, let's just get into it. The tires are smoking. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, so um, let's first talk about a channel update and uh, where things are going and, and, and where I've been. So, okay, last few months, I've just been dealing with personal you know, stuff. Uh, everything's cool, finally on track, things are moving forward and it's awesome. Um, of course, this is not my main job um, yet. Uh, this is not my, not job, I hate jobs. This is not my main source of income. It's just one of them. And uh, my main source of income is um, I publish books and teach people how to do that. Um, but that's a whole nother thing. And that is, um, it was neglected. And so I've been just revamping my program and, and whatnot. And that's just taken so much of my energy um, really over the last little bit. And uh, moving back to Canada from Mexico, things were just distracted and upside down and, and everything. And uh, so I finally am at the very tail end of revamping my entire program. Once it's done over the next few weeks, then I'll be able to focus more on doing videos and, and content with the Range Rover and, and other things. But you have to understand, and I'm sure all of you do, and nobody once has ever messaged me, hey, Mecca, where's all your content? Um, like, you know, and um, so I'm grateful for that. But um, once that is all done, I can focus on creating more content and stuff like that. But like, that's what pays the bills, right? And um, so it only, I'm sure you can understand, it only makes sense. You have to focus on what pays the bills. This is still really a hobby um, that generates some income, but it's still a hobby none, nonetheless. Um, so, that's kind of where things are being the last little bit in terms of why we've just had a bit less content and, and stuff like that. Um, really, that's just been it. We also want to get down to Mexico, um, you know, to, to see Marianne's parents and, and her family and, and all my boys down there. Um, and so, like, you know, that's been putting more pressure on. I can't do as much with Driven Hard as we have to get everything else you know, to the level we want it so we can, you know, um, go down there for a few months and, and uh, you know, chill, but just go down there and, you know, I'll just work from down there and everything. But um, so that's just where the lack of content has been. Like the number of times that I've been able to go hit trails and stuff this this over the last six months, has just been embarrassing. Like it sucks. I've gone out on my own a few times, just when I sound on my own, just without a camera. And um, honestly, like, it's good, but it's just, I haven't, because I've been so stressed out with everything else, um, I haven't, you know, f believe it or not, filming takes a lot of energy. <laughs> like, it, you know, I love, I love my Ranger, right? And I'll just go play in the dirt for hours with it. But then, like, if to film and do that, it's a whole different ballgame, setting cameras up, doing things over again, you know, it's just, and then you got to talk, right? Like, um, you know, it, it's just, it's just different. And um, to do that when you're like stressed about this or it's just, yeah, you know what I mean? So forgive me for the lack of content. That's all I want to say to you guys. Um, like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I talk to people and I'm like, oh my God, I just want to make more content. I was telling her, I was like, oh, I just want to go out and film something. And it's just, yeah, and like, I don't want to just put up crap. That's another thing. Like, I can film stuff all the time, but then it's just going to be garbage. And I would really, really, really like to bring the level of my quality, uh, the level of my content up higher for all of you because I enjoy watching quality content on YouTube, believe it or not. And now, as I say that, there is, I think, some, can we call it the more raw footage? Um, and I love some of those raw footage um, videos where it's just it's a little rough around the edges because it's just the person filming and like it's 
I love some of that. And some of that stuff, I think, has a place, especially on a car channel like this. Um, but yeah, and like I was just fighting with this damn camera to do its focus. I, I literally almost picked it up and threw it at the window um, as an excuse to go buy a new one. Um, but yeah, just I didn't. But this camera is one of the reasons. So anyways, so that's where we're at with that. But on that note, on October 17th, it's October the 4th right now, on October 17th, um, I am going to be joining Land Rover Canada and Land Rover Kelowna in um, the small little town called Merritt for a Land Rover experience. I am freaking stoked because if you remember, I'll put the videos in the cards. I've done one experience down in Monterey, Mexico, and uh, that was amazing. And it was awesome. And it was phenomenal. I loved every single minute of it. I cannot wait to see that dealership and all those guys uh, down in Monterey uh, once we get back down there. Um, but Canada's doing one, and I'm stoked. And so I, call, I called them up, and uh, they were able to hum and haw, but they were able to squeeze me in, even though it was past the registration date. But um, so I'm so excited about that. And I think, I think, um, well, so anyways, there's going to be a ton of content for that. So that's going to be coming up on the 17th of October. And um, I'm going to go buy another action camera. But one thing I would like to know from you is what type of filming angles would you like to see in the video? Like, in fact, I'm going to film another video once I get the rover back, hopefully this week from the shop, um, in terms of like camera angles that you guys want to see um, for off-roading videos. So comment below and then there will be another video that I'll kind of go in what I'm thinking and then we'll get proper feedback, but that would be great. Um, cool. So I think that's the biggest update right now. So let's get into, I feel like there was something else I wanted to add, but oh well. Okay, let's get into this bad boy. So, okay, where's the Range Rover right now? Why am I filming in my home office and not in the Range Rover? Because um, as a typical Land Rover product should be, is at the dealership. And this is from my last dealership appointment. And then I had it back and then it went back, but it went back because I was waiting on, what the hell was I waiting on? I was waiting on, I was waiting on something to come in or no, shit, I lost my train of thought guys, sorry. I don't know, I think it was just because the factory warranty was running out. Oh no, okay, now I remember. It's what happens when you don't film stuff for after a few weeks and you get this stuff back. Okay, so here's what happened. So sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so I get it back. And this one, what they had to fix was, remember the door handle stopped, the sensor just stopped working. So they just replaced the door handle, no big deal. The brake pad warning light came on after they did the rear pads and they said the front were okay, but they only checked the outside of the front. Um, and that was at five, but the inside pad was at three. I kind of got a BS answer from the service advisor there. Haven't been overly happy with them. Not going to use them again. There is somebody I could recommend based on other people's experiences. But anyways, I ended up getting new brake, new front pads with them. It's in hell. They're garbage. So now this is not the service advisor's fault, although it could have been a little bit more empathetic about it. Um, what Land Rover has done is they've switched the parts on the Range Rover Sport for the brake pads. They switched them a couple months ago. They started weeding out the old pads that they were using, which were great. Um, and remember, I have the big Brimo, Brimo, Brimo brake pads. Um, so they've used these new ones. These new ones have more metallic in them. If you have more metallic in them, from speaking to people, forgive me if I'm wrong, just correct me in the comments, um, you get a ton more brake dust and oh my god it's horrible like absolutely horrible and so i called them up i'm like did you guys just use garbage pads and he's like no 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 no. and so i called up the parts department and that's when they looked the parts guy was nice enough over at uh, land rover vancouver to double check everything and he's like oh it looks like there's two part numbers now for your range rover and then he, he did some digging he's like oh it looks like they've actually they're fading out the old pads and they're using these new ones now and the new ones produce way more brake dust in the front and they squeal a little bit they're just trash so anyways you know 
it was obviously not their fault. They didn't know their job is to take the part that JLR um, says, you know, here's the part for the truck. And that's it. That's what a dealership can do. Their hands are tied, right? Because they are, you know, the company is essentially. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to try to um, do some coding on the wheels to see if it reduces the amount of brake dust that I accept as livable. Um, because the stopping power in the old pads were phenomenal. It's like, I'm not tracking it. I haven't had the opportunity to, but like, it's just, you know, I don't need more stopping power. And that's what these higher performance pads give you. Apparently it's just more stopping power. Like I don't need more stopping power, but um, I don't know. I'm going to buy some um, pan. The organizer suggested this coating that I could use. I'm not doing a full ceramic coating to my rooms because that'd be stupid because well, they're my rooms. Um, so just this coating, it's stronger than a wax basically, but it's like a wax. Um, and so that should repel some of the brake dust. We'll see if that works. That's my first option because it's like 30 bucks. My second option, I'm just going to chuck these pads away and buy new pads. Um, that's how much I hate it. And you're like, oh, why would you throw your money away like that? Like, you know, and it is going to be winter time. So I might this, I don't know, who knows? I'm just kind of talking out loud. Um, but it's just, I fucking hate it now. Like, it's just, now the car looks always dirty. It, it's just, I don't know, man. Oh, hit me up in the comments. What do you think of this? So I was talking to Alistair over at um, Hef's Automotive here in Port Moody. And uh, man, that guy is amazing. I, I like, I cannot wait to start working with that, um, with, with uh, him and his shop there. Um, because he's just been so helpful through all my questions and, and everything. Um, but he's like, yeah, bro, I get you some killer pads for like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And he's like, these are, you know, it's just, he knows exactly what I want to avoid and what I want from pads. And he's like, no, these are the ones that we could totally do it. And so, um, I might end up just grabbing those from him when I do winter tire change over my oil change with him in like a week before the event. So we will see, I will keep you updated on that. Anyways. So that was like um, 900 bucks, right? Then um, the other warranty stuff they did was, um, okay, when I turn right, this has been a noise that has been with me since like 10,000 kilometers on the odometer. So it's been with me forever. And it's a noise that only happens under very specific conditions. Here are the conditions. You're turning right, the road is uneven, and you're going at speed above 30 kilometers an hour. If those conditions are met, and remember the road has to be uneven, so that means the suspension has to play. You'll hear a groaning noise like, mm, mm. you get that in the mic? Mm. So it's a groaning noise, it's so weird. And it's one of those noises, I've had a dealership look at it before, they could have replicated. I didn't really know what was happening until I started driving it way more. And um, like I said, it, there's no there's no lights, feel issues or anything like that. It's happened as long as I've had the truck. Um, but I was like, hey, factory warranty is expiring. Why not? You know, I that was, was like, all right, no, he, here here is the list of all all my pet peeves with it. Go fix everything and hold on to it as long as you need. That was my essentially what I wanted to do as the warranty the factory warranty was expiring to take advantage of it. And so they they said, okay, here are, they found the noise. I went for a drive with the foreman. They found the noise. However, um, they, they couldn't exactly pinpoint what was causing it. So what do you do? You start throwing parts away, right? And so they just, they went ham on it. And um, but, uh, so what did they replace? So they replaced all the sway bar bushings. Um, pull down those. Notice all worn in the front ace fluid line leaking at the crimps recommend replacing the front ace hose and retying replace ace hose perform automatic bleed process test drive okay so what did they replace i can have it on the back here okay so the bearings so the front bearings they replaced at a cost of 1500 dollars. they replaced the front cv axles that was like four g's and then the sway bar front and rear they replaced those for just over a grand now, what else did they do? Stabilize it, replace the front stabilizing bar and bushings. Um, sway, rear sway bar bushings, yeah, okay. Front axle, grinding eyes. 
chest ears and bearings. Okay, just want to see if I missed anything. Notice the clicking noise, and now so there's a clicking noise, and that's why it's there right now. But anyways, so it was about like, what was that? Ah, it's about seven to seven to eight thousand um, dollars in warranty work. So I didn't have to pay for any of that. I just paid for the brakes, right? Nine hundred bucks. But so about seven eight grand in in um, in warranty work with parts and labor and everything, and uh, they replaced all those different things. And the funny thing is, and then they thought it wasn't happening, and then I was like, okay, let me go see if it's actually happening. And uh, yeah, I've heard it a few more times. So, but I'm what I'm thinking is it actually might be. A, a problem that happens as everything gets up to temp because once they replace the parts they go for a drive and there's a part on their street right near the dealership where i was able to replicate the noise for them and they were able to do that too so once they replaced everything they went back there and they did it the problem is when i come to the dealership i've driven for half an hour when they replace the parts they've driven for 30 seconds and so I have a feeling it might be a temp, like it just might be one of those things that's only happening when everything's up to temp or being driven for a little while. There's a lot going on, huh? So anyways, um, but like I said, like it's one of those things, it's not really, it hasn't affected anything at all. It's just kind of a weird sound every now and then. So I don't really care if they find it and they fix it or not, but, if they're just going to go look at stuff and just replace stuff, great, awesome. That's what a warranty is for. Go replace all the warrant stuff you you see, and like, I, so I have no problem with that. I'm like, okay, go ahead. Um, so that's that. Now, where's it at right now? So I got it back, and then I noticed it was making a clicking sound when I turned left on um, the steering wheel. So if you're at you know standstill, pretty much. And you turn the steering wheel, it's like. And a little bit worse when it's loud. And I thought it was CV axles or CV joints or something, but it's not. And the foreman, Mike, who um, has been phenomenal with it, said he believes it's, uh, what did he say? The shield, the uh, skid plates says there could be something. He, he was aware of what the sound was. And so, um, they couldn't get it in right away. I wanted to know if I should still be driving it. They're like, yeah, it's fine. They booked an appointment for me the following week. I dropped it off and yeah, but then now, <laughs> okay, cool. No, you know what? I'm going to leave it there because there is a hiccup um, that I'm running into with, with them right now, but we won't get into that. I'm going to get into that in the, in the video. I get when I, when I get it back and then I do another follow-up video with that service that that's just happened um there they got my windshield replaced and and uh because it was basically it blew up on me. um the rock hit it on the highway but um i'm gonna get into the details and the hiccups that i've been running into with the dealership right now but here's the coolest thing and this is why i'm so excited and this is one of the reasons I'm way less stressed about it than I actually should be, because normally I'd be like losing more hair. I'd be freaking out, punching holes in walls, throwing shit. But um, the extended warranty that I've purchased, I have a video on that. The best part about it is I no longer have to work with a dealership. I can actually work with third party shops like Hesps Automotive that focuses in or on Land Rover stuff. And by doing that, it just gives you a little bit more leeway. For example, the brakes. They wouldn't have done the crappy brakes that JLR is doing now. They would have put in better ones. However, both cases are covered in warranty, so it doesn't matter. But without getting into too many details on video, if you know, just because you know, uh, you can DM me if you, if if you want to know more specifics. But um, I'm stoked about that because um, the 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 guy there, uh, Al. Seems like an awesome dude. He has a great reputation within the community, and having a having a mechanic and owner of a shop that uh, just understands from a driver's standpoint, and somebody like me he called he called me anal. He's like, you might be a little anal, and they probably not. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm anal. Of course, I'm anal with my car. Good God, <laughs> my car. <laughs> and uh, he knows that, and he's like, man, don't worry, I'm gonna get you taken care of. I know how to deal with these warranty companies and everything. So that was a big you know, relief off my shoulders, so to speak. But uh, anyways, I'll get more into that in the next little bit. 
Um, hopefully I get the truck back this week um, after they've, um, oh, and my remote, remote start stopped working. It still locks it and unlocks it, but uh, it's not starting it. They think it's just due to an update, update Android made and then update they made and they think it's just not in sync anymore. So, um, but anyways, I hopefully should get it back in the next couple of days um, and then I'll do a full report uh, debrief, so to speak, on what that service has been. And um, what was the last thing? And then, yeah, um, well, I got, I'm at 12,000 kilometers. I'm slightly overdue for, for my oil change. Um, I usually do it every 10,000 and I'm at 12. And uh, I got to get my winters put on before I head to Kamloops for the event. Other than that, uh, let me know how you guys are doing. Um, I've missed doing videos. I'm excited to get going again. Um, it's uh yeah let's let's cross our fingers some, for some snow or if i go down to monterey um for a few months we got mohib i'm gonna hit on the way providing winter but who knows what's gonna happen i i honestly i got no no freaking clue what's gonna happen over the next little bit guys i have no clue all i know is i want to be driving a lot off-road and connect with some of you um you know it's uh there hasn't been enough meetups and i know the world has kind of falling, you know, with everything. But um, yeah, I would like to get together with some of you who are local and go hit some trails and have some fun and, and all of that fun jazz. But, um, oh, 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 and hold on. Make sure you like this video. YouTube right now wants likes. So like, 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 like. I'd appreciate that big time. Um, till next time, everybody. I'm Mecca. Let me know what you are driving. Peace.